because when we talk about growing industries, we of course have to talk about the tech sector. And we're going to have a very interesting panel discussion about what it's like as an insider in this industry. Okay, so this will be our second panel discussion for today, Life as a Tech Insider. Now, unfortunately, one of our panelists, Ms. Jolene Tay, General Manager of Cardup, cannot make it. However, our, two our other two panelists are still here and very excited to share with all of you. So if you're just coming in, welcome to our second panel discussion. So the panelists who will be sharing with you today are Abhishek Jeswal, Principal Product Manager, Zalora, as well as Mark Wilfred, Director Solutions Consulting for Southeast Asia and India, SAP Conquer. And our moderator for today's session is Joshua Fong, Key Account Manager, Job Street Singapore. Ladies and gentlemen, let's give them a warm welcome to the stage. Hello, mic test. Hello, and welcome everyone. I hope you have been enjoying the Sick Better Career Fair so far. So, I am Joshua. I'm the Key Account Manager from Job Street Singapore. And today's topic would be focusing around life as a tech professional and insider's insight. So, over here, we will be focusing on uh, today's job market where jobs in tech are some of the most sought after. Have you ever wondered what it's like to be working in the tech industry? In this session, we have two distinguished professionals from tech who will be sharing about their experiences and how they have kept up with this rapid, ever-changing scene. So first up, we have AJ, that is a Principal Product Manager from Zalora. Hey AJ, uh, please hey. share with us a bit more on your experiences and uh, what's new in Zalora. Hi, a tech issue, I guess. <laughs> um, I, have, I have been here, spent a decade in tech and have gone through um, a lot of pivots, right? I started my journey as a, as a, as a, as a QA, then morphed into a, an engineer, then morphed into a PO, product owner, then product manager, and now in Zalora, I am looking after the cart and checkout uh, experience and the, the loyalty experience. Um, as you rightly said, tech has, uh, in this one year, has transformed into the next uh, phase where everyone is racing against the time to put out their AI-powered thing. Uh, a lot of exciting things are also brewing in Zalora because we are one of the biggest uh, fashion e-commerce in Southeast Asia and customer experience is at the heart of everything that we do. And definitely, like, tech um, is the biggest enabler of bringing the business outcomes and fulfilling the customer's uh, needs or rather what they are looking to uh, via tech and AI definitely is going to play a big, big role. Like three, four years ago, what we, what we thought was a moonshot idea now can be done as a POC in like a couple of months. So I mean, that's, that's the transformational journey we are on now. Yeah. Thanks, AJ. So next, we have Mark Wilfred. Director Solutions Consulting of Southeast Asia and India of SAP Conquer. Mark, can you tell us a bit about yourself and what's new in SAP Conquer recently? Sure. Hi, everyone. I, like you said, I'm based in Singapore. Um, a bit about myself, I started out as an accountant, so I'm not a technology professional uh, starting out, I started out at Ernst and & Young, and then I was a diplomat in the Foreign Service, Singapore Ministry of Foreign Affairs. And then from there, I got headhunted to implement enterprise... Hello? Uh, implement enterprise applications at an education company. And that's sort of where I decided, hey, this tech thing is quite interesting. I'll keep going. And then uh, I moved into Oracle and uh, then SAP. So for the last 10 years, um, I've been helping companies run their digital transformation on the cloud. 
Um, about Conquer, we are a travel and expense solution. Um, and I guess what's most interesting is we are we, we're just launching our new travel platform that brings consumer-friendly uh, travel booking um, and expense to uh, to users uh, in large enterprises. And we are also coming up with some Gen AI um, use cases in the coming months. Like he said, there is a real push in the industry to to leverage Gen AI. Uh, use cases in, in business, and uh, we're also excited to do the same. Thank you, Mark. So to kick things off with the first topic, I'm sure many of us will be interested in both of your journeys as a professional in tech. Can you share with us a bit on how your journey has been? Did you always envision moving into this industry? Was this intentional or unintentional? Maybe you could start with AJ first. Um. When I was in high school, I used to suck at programming. I used to suck at computer science and I never envisioned, in fact, but I ended up uh, taking a computer science course in NTU and again, I sucked there also. Uh, so I never envisioned my, my journey as where I am right now. Um, I used to apply for bank, management, associate programs, etc. But as life would have it, I, I started my journey in tech. Um, but the more the more I started working with real life problems, which is completely different from theoretical things that are taught at school, at least at my time, uh, the more um, exciting it became because at, at the heart of everything, like as human beings, we love to solve problems. Be, I mean, no wonder Lego is so popular, right? Because at the end of the day, solving a problem step by step and at, at heart of tech, this is exactly what it is. So um, over the years, like, I, I have really, um, you can say that I really enjoy my, my job in, in this world because at the end of the day, I get to solve problem. Of course, in tech, there are a variety of roles and as an engineer, you're solving a different kind of problem. In my role, I'm also solving both, let's say, a business problem as well, people problem, right? Because you're managing stakeholders. So different problems, but at the end of the day, it's a fast moving thing. And I would just sum it up by saying that, um, it's, it's a beautiful journey to see the ideas that you have in mind coming to life and then people using it. That's, that's all the, the whatever we do in tech world is all about. Thanks, AJ. And what about you, Monk? So, yeah, I, I personally didn't envision going into technology. In fact, I think in university, I was a bit skeptical of technology. I mean, I realized that it's a means to an end for me. Um, I needed to work with technology to do my job. Uh, but, you know, as I interacted more with technology, especially in the, when I implemented it at a customer and how, saw how it helped my function and how it improved people's lives, and I thought, hey, you know, this is something that I would like to do going forward because there are a lot of people who are like me who are skeptical and think technology is like something bad. But actually, you know, if it can help solve, uh, help you with your work, you can finish work on time and go back to your family or do other things that you really love. And so that started my journey. I mean, once I realized that that's what I want to do, that's when I got deeper into technology. But I, and I learned more along the way. It's not like, you know, you, when you start, you have everything figured out. So yeah, I think we'll get to that question later. Thanks, Mark. So with the hot topic now, and this is something that you both have discussed, right? Things like the rise of AI with chatbots, ChatGPT, and even certain image softwares like Midjourney, where they can create an entire image. How has such advancements impact your daily operations? And how do you think it will affect tech jobs moving forward? Maybe we can start with Mark. Sure. So I think when ChatGPT came out, like uh, we are talking to fellow professionals across the region and uh, we were like, oh, you know, do you, do you think that's going to be something that's going to affect someone like me who talks to customers every day? Will they stop coming and talking to a person and just put the question into ChatGPT? So I, I decided, hey, you know, I'm going to type some of these questions and put it into ChatGPT and see what ChatGPT says. And what I came to realize is um, it can answer certain things um, well, but it doesn't think in the same way as a human. As a human, when you tell me something, I can feel what you're telling me, I can feel the pain, I can relate to you, I can understand your problem, I can contextualize it more than the technology can. 
So at the end of the day, when I look at AI, and by the way, AI has been here for 30 years, and there have been peaks and troughs. So, and there's more than one type of AI. Gen AI is just one type of AI. I think there are six or more types of AI. Um, at the end of the day, AI is, is, is programmed by a human. Um, and so the human impacts or limits what AI can do to an extent. Um, and it, it's there to augment us and help us at our job so that we can focus at higher value tasks, right? Um, in, in not re doing repetitive stuff or road stuff. We, we are move on, moving on to different tasks. And so I think as an as a individual, don't look at it as like AI is going to take my job. It's like AI may reduce what I'm doing at my current job, but how am I then going to look at other people's job or take on other tasks or other roles that will make me more complete as a professional. That, that's my opinion. Thanks, Mark. AJ, on to you. I mean, just building on what Mark said, um, when Chat GPT came, I was a bit skeptical because there was this whole hype around Web3. I'm like, this is another fade. Um, but after a while, I realized, wait a minute, um, let me interact. And what Mark said is that what, what chat GPT or any AI misses is the context, the human context, the cultural context, the emotional context, a, a lot of other contexts that we as growing up are inherently known to us. So I agree with him, which is AI will only replace jobs which are A plus B is equal to C, like really step by step, quite mundane. But what AI is going to help us is become smarter in our work. So I am using ChatGPT, for example, as a, as a brainstorm buddy. I have to have next my moonshot idea on, let's say Zalora, how can I 10x or 5x this thing? I, it gives me a starting scratching pad, right, to, to start uh, drawing and, and get an idea. And from there, my, my context and my um, um, intelligence kicks in to help to kind of shape it up. So all in all, it's going to make us more productive. It's going to make us more smarter in our work and we should definitely use it as much as we can. And at the end of the day, it also helps us. I'll be honest with you, like one thing, what I will say is immediate benefit of ChatGPT is it helps you improve your communication skill. Because if you can't ask them the right question, it can't give you the right answer. So yeah. Thanks, Thanks AJ. So aside from um, how you have been using ChatGPT, what do you think are some ways that it can improve our functions moving forward in the next maybe five to 10 years with this implementation of AI that you guys foresee? Shall we start with Mark? Sure. So I, I think what we see from AI, at least in the finance accounting space, is it automates a lot of you know, the routine work. But I think increasingly can also analyze the data that you have and give you a guidance of like what's going to happen from a business perspective. Like, are you going to hit your number or are you going to miss? And then you as a business, like what AJ mentioned, how are you going to adjust accordingly or, or rebudget or potentially bring in a new idea that's going to shake the business. Um, I, I also agree that, you know, it, 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 it is good, it's good to use AI to, um, for brainstorming or coming up with ideas. I think, it, but we also have to be careful not to like lose our critical thinking and uh, because if, you, if you're just taking the ideas and you're not adding the cultural or in your, your um, context to it, then you're, you're going to miss out. But overall, I see, I see AI being embedded in more and more things that we do today. I, I feel it's going to help us in terms of like, even when you book travel, it's going to tell you, hey, you know, you're going to KL, this is the favorite airline that you're going to take or the cheapest airline and this is a hotel that's located close to your conference. So it's going to make things easier. It's going to shorten the time you're taking to do what you need to do. And then that's how I see AI being part of us, but I don't see it replacing us. Thanks, Mark. What about you, AJ? I mean, next five to 10 years is a bit unpredictable. But what I foresee is that... Um, with this new AI technology, um, the life of customers is gonna become very easy. So as he was saying, right, imagine I have to book a flight. Booking a flight is a, is a very calculative, tedious process. But now I can have a conversation saying in the next, this is my price, tell me this is the route I want to do, these are my constraints, and done. Give me top three options. So even in Zalora, 
how we envision is that it's going to really, really streamline our, our back-end operations, even the customer experience, which is one of the biggest problems in fashion industry is sizing. Online uh, industry has one of the highest returns because the sizing doesn't fit. AI can help to close the gap, right? So in the next five to ten years, um, the customer experience is going to become the to next level, which is going to raise the bar a lot higher. And the companies that don't adopt it are definitely going to le be left behind because customers will move on to the products. At the end of the day, all matters is customers, right? How their life is easier because with the advent of new technology, our, our mental all of us are developing ATDD in some context. We have very limited time to do things. And if AI helps us to get that job faster, we will go for it. So that's how I see it evolving. Thanks, AJ. I think this discussion on AI um, is multifaceted, where you have an you have a area where you know it's gonna help you change or make things more efficient, whereas there's the other side where there are certain limitations. I think you also discuss about things like critical thinking. These are areas that we will also have to practice or even, for example, business acumen. Um, with that, I just want to check in with the both of you. Since, you're both, um, have, since both of you have been working in tech for some time, if you had to pick one main perk, what would that be and why? I, I actually thought about this question a bit. So I think for me, the main perk is I think most people will assume it's money, but yeah, I mean, it's one of the perks of working in, in tech, but like the reality is, I think we are in a very privileged position, especially working for a large enterprise company like myself, to meet with uh, huge organizations, organizations who are innovative and, and startups, uh, interact with senior leadership and exchange ideas. They have problems that they need to solve and we learn about the industry, we learn about the business and we find uh, the middle ground between how business and technology can come together, they can adopt technology and do better. And so that, that's what is the greatest part. I, as a young professional 10 years ago, now not so young anymore, but like as a young professional, I learned a lot from the people I interacted with. I mean, I'm helping them, but I'm also learning at the same time. Like I, I didn't know as much about certain industries till I met customers from those industries. I obviously taught them about technology, best practices, but I learned industry, business, business acumen, like you said, from some of these senior leaders. Thank you, Mark. What about you, AJ? Um, building on what Mark said, right? One of the perks is definitely um, you get to work with a lot of smart people, and that really ups your game because now you're in a different ball game, right? I mean, the the way they approach solving problems, complex problems, etc. One perk that I have really enjoyed in my ten years is. In, in this tech world is uh, seeing the magic happen. So I have worked in different domains, different products. I worked on a product and this is five years ago, now which is very common. You could control uh, a robotic hardware via your app. Like six years ago, I was like, wow, okay, that's amazing. And having built that, seeing that magic happen, activating the machine via Alexa voice command, which was very new at that time. Like seeing the magic happen, like you have an idea which you think is a bit moonshot, but working with a bunch of smart people and making it happen is like, is, is, is the perk in tech. You can see how the world is gonna shift before the whole world see it. And I think that's how I will summarize it, yeah? The perk in working in tech. Thank you, AJ. So, we will now dive deeper into what it takes to be a professional in this ever-changing industry. What sort of changes have the both of you seen in your career, in the tech scene, and how have you then been able to keep up with this kind of rapid change? Um, if we were to compare, let's say, five, ten years ago and now. Yeah, so I think when I first started out in tech, like, although everybody thinks tech companies are fully automated and everything <laughs> works uh, uh, in a very intelligent way, I will tell you that uh, sometimes we don't they, we don't exactly do what we say. And so it can be incredibly manual in these companies. And as you start off your career, you, 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 you realize that, okay, it's been manual. But as you, as in the last five years, I've seen increased automation. For example, I do solutions consulting. So I'm presenting how the solution would work for you if you, if you adopted our solution. And um, now there are solutions out there that can actually show you the solution without me being there. 
It can let you download or interact with it without me being there. And so now I have to create the content that you're going to interact with without me, right? Um, the other thing is in the past, I think predominantly our interactions are physical. I'm at your, at your office location. I'm meeting you at an event. Then COVID happened and we increasingly moved online. And how you present online, how you prepare to interact with customers online is very different. Within five seconds, they are looking at something else, doing something else. How do you keep their attention? What kind of questions do you ask them? So you constantly have to like adjust yourself to um, what's happening in the market and increase your skill sets. Uh, I think in tech, like if you are just staying steady or if you convince yourself that you are all knowing, that's like your uh, that will be your folly. Yeah. Thanks, Mark. What about you, AJ? I mean, personally. It has been very hard to catch up <laughs> with the ever-changing technology. I remember when blockchain was introduced, I was lost. I'm like, okay, and, and trying to understand. But, but what, what my mantra is that, um, and this is, I'm inspired by Elon Musk of first principles. Um, the, the I should be on the first principles, which is, okay, step by step, what I am supposed to be solving for. And, and no matter which technology, at the end of the day, can always be broken down into uh, certain fundamentals on how you are interacting with it, right? So it doesn't, it's not necessary for us to be catching up with the latest technology. What I would advise is just create an ecosystem around you where you're surrounded by certain smart people, be it online, be in your real life, and, and keep your ear onto those conversations. Like, okay, what is happening? And something that catches your eye, then start to slowly follow up. And within those conversations, you will learn. You don't need to chase every technology, but also don't be skeptical of every, like, technology, right? You keep your eye, you, your, I'm tell, like, in my experience, your gut feeling will tell you if there is something big happening and then you kind of start to learn more about it and see how it applies to your daily life. That's all. Thanks, AJ. So, Monk discussed uh, about skills. How important is it to have specialized skills in tech? I think most of us, um, some of us here, who are not in tech background are interested to know. And what type of soft skills have you found useful in the industry or your role in specialization? So I, I would say you don't need technology experience to get into tech, but you do need um, some sort of functional expertise, right? Whether that is finance or accounting, HR, e-commerce, customer experience, you have to have some functional expertise or you're from a specific industry, for example. And then from there, you have an open mindset about learning about the different elements of technology. And it depends on your role. So some roles are deeper in technology, like what AJ does. And some, like my role in particular is a hybrid role. I sell to functional people. I also deal with uh, technical people. And so I sort of have to simplify complex ideas um, and technology into something people can relate to and people can understand. And so, um, where was I going with that? So, I mean, to, to, to the point I'm saying is like, uh, you need to bring something to the table, but like a lot of it can be learned and you shouldn't be afraid of learning like, you know, how integration works or how systems get integrated or how AI works or a lot of these concepts are very understandable actually. And I, I think I met recently at, a, at another panel this guy who had a social science degree and he was doing cyber security and he learned it all on his own. So he doesn't have a degree in it. So it, it, the tech industry is, is, is quite an open, embracing culture. It's just whether you have the open mindset and, and are interested in doing that. Specifically, like what has... Um, uh, what was the second question, sorry? What soft skills have you found useful in your role or the industry? I think a key one, which I think AJ already had shared, is looking at problems and breaking it down into steps of how to solve that problem. I mean, we call it troubleshooting, but essentially it's problem solving, and the, it, it, that's a critical thing in tech. Like, if you're not able to problem solve and break down complex tasks into simpler tasks and work through it and find the right people who are going to help you, because typically you're not going to be able to solve most things on your own, um, so that's one, one important thing. The, the other thing is, um, I forget now, maybe go back to, yeah. AJ? Um, 
I mean, Mark has covered a lot of things. What I would say is that um, he stole my line, which is what I wanted to say also was you don't need a tech degree. 100%, even though I had tech degree, I didn't find any use in it. Um, and when you will enter the tech world, depending uh, how close you are sitting to engineering or to the real deep tech, a lot of jargons will be thrown at you, right? And that can be intimidating. My, my only advice is the soft skills that you need is being curious, um, hunger to learn, and third is um, this term that I learned recently which was high agency, but what it means is basically um, you just don't give up. Be relentless, be persistent, right? Um, if you have these three things, nothing, nothing can stop you in tech world, nothing. Like I have had entered into conversations where um, I really don't understand what the hell engineers are talking about, but I literally make them understand me like I'm five years old. Right, like being relentless, being curious, being being that hunger to learn, and what Mark said, what you bring to the table. Even though, let's say, when I when I joined Zalora, I have zero e-commerce experience. I have zero e-commerce experience. I used to work in consulting, uh, product consulting before that. What I bring to the table is um, the ability to ask questions when you challenge status quo. And these are the soft skills that you, you don't go with the assumptions. Challenge the assumptions and try to think differently than the others at the table. And that's the immediate value you can bring. Because people who are working on it are too close to the problem. Uh, there are countless time when I enter into a discussion and I see people are bound by constraints. So the solution itself is bound by constraints. But someone just ask an innocent question challenging the constraint and boom, in the next one hour, the discussion, a, a great solution comes out which no one had thought about. So, you don't need a technical knowledge. Of course, eventually you will build it, but that's where you're, again, to sum it up, curiosity, um, don't give up and hunger to learn and you're good to go. Thank you so much, you both, for your advice. So for some of us who are interested to know if tech is the right career for them, how do you know if it is even suitable? How, do, how would you advise the audience um, some of the telltale signs if this is something that they are looking for, something that they can strive in. So, so I, I'll break it down into like, depending on your, your current situation. So let's say you're employed, right? And you're working in an organization and you're thinking that you want to make a pivot to the tech industry. So I, I would encourage you, most organizations, small or big, are going through some sort of digital transformation initiative. Right, predominantly IT is doing it, but they always ask for volunteers from the business side of things. And most times, people don't volunteer. So I encourage you to volunteer, get your hands dirty, understand what techno how technology works, uh, how it's benefiting your business, and then from there decide: okay, is this something that I'm interested in or not? Right, that's one step. That's how I got into it. The other one is um, I'm here in, in my, vo my capacity as a volunteer career advisor at WSG. So there are people in the tech sector who have volunteered their time uh, to help give guidance or occupation-specific guidance or sector-specific guidance for people who want to go into tech. So, you know, you can reach out to someone like me, ask me what's a day in a life working at SAP or SAP Concur you know, what are the challenges I face? Or you can tell me, hey, I'm interested in cybersecurity. I may not know the answer to that, but I can introduce you to someone else. I think the more people you talk to and actually get your hands dirty, that's when you understand whether tech is the right industry for you. But let's say you are, you are not employed now and you're like, what am I going to do, right? There, there are other options out there. So I think there are apprenticeship programs, which I saw walking around outside, where you can get an opportunity to get your hands um, learn about AI and then start doing projects. There are also, I mean, if you like learning things online um, while you're doing something else, you can learn online and do projects virtually for organizations that you don't necessarily have to do a big project, but you do small projects and build up your portfolio and build up your confidence in terms of transitioning to tech. So those are, I think, some of the things that I've talked to people and shared and, and people I found helpful. What about you, AJ? Um, Okay, um, it, 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 it depends on your context, so how I would kind of group it down is A, are you bored in your current job, right, which is it's too mundane for you and 
if if solving problems and i think it appeals to every human being if if solving problems is is something that you like then you should definitely explore the world because um different type of tech companies are solving different type of problems right second is um you do like your job but you feel like okay it can be either monetary or it can be that you don't see a much growth and one thing in the tech world is that the growth if if you show the skills that we talked about the growth can be exponential no one is bound by experience no one i have seen junior people exponentially growing and i have seen senior people just staying on the line right so if you want uh, uh, if you are ambitious if you want an exponential growth tech world is for you for sure right um in terms of how to get into i think mark you covered a lot what i would add on to is that network so one of the problem with any established industry is that um, which is a very practical problem that um, you need experience to get into it right and and as i i basically pivoted my journey from an engineer to to product manager and that time it was very challenging because uh, everywhere you needed product management experience and it became a chicken egg problem like <laughs> i need to get experience in order to get into that so what what would really help everyone who wants to get into is build networks right and the network either can be reaching out to people on linkedin right there are i think categories who are op- they they want to offer coaching services or what mark said you can reach out uh, to whg coaching service but network people find mentors i can i can guarantee you that it will open doors for you what if you don't network people it's still possible to get but in my personal experience is quite hard because you then are just one application amongst a lot of other people but networking a human sees your hunger they they get to know you that's a different story altogether that gets you the foot in the door and rest they can even coach you during the interviews so yeah thanks aj now this is a good segue uh to my next question what kind of job seekers stand out in your perspective and what are the type of candidates in the tech industry that you would be looking for if let's say you were to hire for your team or your organization so i'll go with the the traits that i look for when i when i interview i think one is uh perseverance right like he said uh tech is ever changing uh there will be a lot of challenges and are you the type of person who will persevere through those challenges work through it work through the task and complete it or are you someone who will be like i i'm not going to i it's too much i'm out and and so that's one thing perseverance i would put that with resilience as well because change is constant in tech like today i i we could be you know this could be a focus area tomorrow you know that person is no longer in the business and we are focus has changed and so you have to be able to anchor yourself to things outside of your organization like your family your faith or or what have you but like you need to be resilient and focus about helping the business uh the the third thing is i think he may talk about it is being agile and you know i think in tech we encourage people to make lateral moves i think a lot of singaporeans very kiasu we want to go up Um I can tell you like now that I'm at this level if you ask me whether I want to go up I was sharing earlier like I I'm not really in a rush to go up because I I don't feel like at the further up you go there's more politics there's more of things that I I'm not as interested in and so actually now when I look at things I'm looking at lateral or potentially moving down right where I'm doing a different task I'm learning something different So that kind of mindset of agility is needed in tech and you know you got to set your ego aside like I think if you if you have a lot of if you have e- ego if an ego is a big part of you you will find tech quite challenging and then um I I I think yeah I'll leave I'll give him some to to um to talk about but yeah those are the things I look for I think from a candidate perspective I'm quite open to like non-traditional candidates um because i'm a non-traditional candidate myself um i believe that we should give everyone a chance um regardless of their background so if they show the traits that i'm looking for they have the right foundation they bring something to the table i'm willing to coach and help them along that journey and um yeah that's that's my perspective 
No, no, I mean, um, just to add on to it, again, context matters. So it depends on the kind of role that we are hiring for and, and the seniority, because with seniority, you are much closer to impact, hence some experience is required. But let's assume for the sake of conversation, it's a, it's a beginner or a sort of a lateral move, right? What I usually look for is someone who's a go-getter, right? What, what Mark said, perseverance and resilience, right? So someone is a go-getter, which is, you're starting in a, in a completely new domain. Every day would be a, a freaking challenge for you. What do you do? Do you give up? Or do you say, you know what, I'm going to go through it and identify the people that I can ask help for. You should not, not be ashamed to ask for help. That's the first thing, right? So setting aside the ego, you should not be asked for help, ask for support. Uh, a go-getter and then I think second thing that I would look for is again, um, hunger to grow. And because that directly impacts your motivation. Because um, eventually every day it's going to be challenged, then there will be highs, there will be lows. What gets you through the next day? And it's the hunger to grow, right? Um, so for me, I think I, I look for those two qualities. Rest can be taught, can be built on these top of uh, these qualities. Yeah. Great. Thanks, Mark. Thanks, AJ. Since we're almost running out of time, um, could each of you share a final piece of advice for the audience? If there's just one advice that they have to take away, what would that be? I, th I think we said a lot, but I think at the end of the day, it comes down to um, being, being, uh, having the mindset of continuous learning, right? And realizing that the best is yet to come, right? You need to network and meet people and learn more about other things that you are not expert in and you know it could be technology related it may not be but like it, it, technology is infused everywhere right so I think having that continuous learning mentality and le and realizing that you are not you don't monopolize that knowledge I think is key to your success I think if you talk to people if you continue to learn the opportunities are there and then like he said like you know the more people you talk to the more likely they're gonna say hey I actually am looking for someone like you and um, you know, why don't you flick me your resume or r approach me on LinkedIn and uh, we, we can see what we can do. Yeah. What about you, AJ? I mean, I would leave a very high level thought, which is life is too short to be comfortable, <laughs> right? Um, you have to, if, if you are too comfortable in your current phase of life, then something is off because um, until and unless you become uncomfortable, you won't learn any new thing. and. Success doesn't follow uh, stagnation. Success always uh, follows something that, I mean, look at all the successful people in the world. In your life, the big names, who are bold enough to take on a challenge, right? And this is what life is all about and this is what we probably try to teach our kids. So, this is what I would like. Be bold, be courageous, be curious, rest will follow. Rest, you will figure it out right and what Mark said yes talk to people have those conversations be in touch build your network because sometimes of course it helps to build on someone else's experience why waste your years try to gain the same experience if someone has already done that yeah thanks AJ so as we bring this discussion to an end I would really like to thank our esteemed uh, speakers Mark and AJ for the invaluable insights they have brought us and I really hope this session is uh, available to the audience. So thank you everyone for your time and I hope you would enjoy, continue enjoying the Seek Better Career Fair outside. Thanks everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.